What's up guys, Brad here from Piney Grove and we have Lucas here from Peaks Peak Hobby Homestead. He's down here in Florida on vacation so I coaxed him to come out here to the farm so I get one good day of work out of him. <laughs> But in today's video, we're gonna do a comparison. We're gonna compare this six foot finish mower. It's a Frontier GM 3072 finish mower. And we've got this Kubota zero turn with a 54 inch deck. It's a 19 horsepower diesel mower. So what we wanna do in this video is assess if the tractor is a better piece of equipment to mow large acreage or a zero turn. Now I've already got a preset opinion, but what's beautiful about this video is Lucas does not have a preset opinion on which one's gonna do better. So why don't you share your thoughts and experiences and your expectation of this? Yeah, so I'm coming from a totally different mowing experience because if you were to ask me which I would choose to mow with on Peaks Peak, I mow with my subcompact tractor mid-mount mower deck. And I do that because I have hilly ground, with lots of moisture around the, the house. I've got ditches and, and just areas that a zero turn would not perform well on. And I have no experience with a three point finish mower. So there's two things I'm excited about. That's one, trying out this nice diesel zero turn mower that you've got, and then getting a little bit of experience with a finish mower on the three point hitch because it's something you know I've never used. If I was going to throw a guess out there, I would say on your type of property, mm -hmm. the zero turn would be my choice. So just uh, to set the stage here, the finish mower is six foot wide, a 72 inch finish mower. It's got three rotating blades with two cutting edges per blade. And the zero turns the same way, it's just not as wide. So we're not gonna measure efficiency in width, but we will measure how fast we can go down and back and get a clean cut. And uh, so that'll be one thing we're looking for. And I think that's kind of the biggest thing is clean cut and speed and then um, maybe even ride. You know, will the zero turn ride better? Like, do you really want to use a zero turn on this pasture or is a tractor the better choice or vice versa? Those are kind of the questions we're going to try and answer. So let's get to it. All right, let's do it. First thing I'm going to do is run the tractor down there and back and give us two separate areas, one side for the finish mower and one side for the zero turn. Based on me making those two passes, what, what's in your mind right now with the finish mower? Well, it's pretty impressive because this is pretty thick, pretty tall grass, and he was moving pretty fast. And one thing I know is tractors ride pretty good. I'm already starting to change my opinion. I'm a little bit worried that the zero turn might not ride quite so well on this. I don't know how rough this pasture is, but look like you had a pretty smooth ride on the tractor. He, he's on to something and the big thing that we're gonna note about this finish mower, so keep that in mind as we cut with the zero turn, is that finish mower discharges out the back and that's gonna be huge and I think Lucas is about to learn how huge that's gonna be here in this hot, dusty Florida environment. Yeah. So that's his first time using a tractor with a finish mower behind it. He didn't know how to engage the PTO on this tractor because I think his is a button, an electric PTO, and this one is actually manual. So you push down the clutch, engage the PTO, then you let out the clutch. It's not really a clutch, but I don't know what else to call it. Now you've, <laughs> you've had, a, had a pass down and back. What do you think? Man, that was impressive. It really was. Um, I'll tell you what I noticed right away is not only were we dealing with tall, thick grass, but we're dealing with a lot of thatch. So this is like mowing twice as much grass as what I thought we were about to hit. And it did it really well. How did the tractor feel? Um, I, I saw the speed you were going. It looked like it was about the right speed. It's hard to tell because I'm not on there with you. But did the tractor feel like it was bogging down at all? I was, I was only hitting, you know, partial, partial pedal on the hydrostat. I wasn't pushing it too hard. I kind of opened it up a little bit when I was hitting some thick stuff so I could hear it pull it down mm -hmm. to know what I was listening for. And then I kind of tried to keep it at a steady speed from there. But you can mow at a pretty good clip. The other thing that I noticed is, man, the tractor rides good. I mean, it doesn't beat and bang and jiggle you around. It's even a smoother ride than my little subcompact. You know, the tires are bigger. So I noticed when you first started that you weren't sure where the PTO was. You yeah. wanna talk real quick about how that's different from your subcompact to this L-Series? Yeah, the actual PTO engagement on the subcompact on the BX that I own, the clutch is in integrated okay. into the lever. So you just kind of like a riding lawnmower, when you turn it on, then it kicks on and you use the clutch to engage and disengage it in this. So that was a little bit different for me, but I like the setup. On the L3902, they went to an electric PTO. 
um, where you just hit a switch. It's different from this mechanical. The mechanical PTO on these L series have kind of been an issue because it's a cable okay. and the cable will sometimes bind up. But this one has been fine so far while I've owned it. But I, I am looking forward to, you know, maybe in my next tractor, I have electrical PTO. Yeah. All right, so that's uh, his quick assessment of the tractor, just the tractor. That's all he's used now for this uh, experiment. We're gonna put him on the zero turn and I think I already know what he's gonna say but uh, we're going we're gonna to put him on there and let him experience it because uh, I think he's going to have a, a change of heart. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> So we forgot and left his mic on so I couldn't talk while he was mowing because I wanted to say something about uh, the grass blowing and I'm sure he's going to mention that as well. But yeah. okay, so you went down and back with the zero turn. We had it set to about three inches, which yeah. is about the same as the finished mower. And I told him when you hear the mower bog down to, you know, kind of lay off the stick a little bit. So anyway, what's your impression down and back? Well, so the first thing I'll say is I almost had to stop completely once to get the the dust and debris out of my eyes because it was blowing in my face. Um, honestly, this is a fantastic mower. There's no question about it, but it requires a lot more attention to drive this down and back versus driving the tractor. Um, you talking about the sticks? And the well, to, to keep a good straight line and to control the power of the machine, because as we got into the thicker stuff, it really started to bog down quick. And the other thing I noticed is yeah, the machine will move a whole lot quicker if you try, but it beats you to death when you do. <laughs> yes. I, at one point, I was like, I better slow down. I don't want to break his machine because I kind of got to bouncing, you know. I've mowed enough with both these machines to know how they were going to act. And when I saw it bumping, because the pasture looks smooth, but it's not perfectly smooth. And I was thinking, how long can he keep that up? Yeah, I would make two points here. One, if you look down at what we just mowed here, you might think, well, the zero turn did a much prettier job. But keep in mind that not only did I throw all of the thatch and grass clippings on what we had already mowed going down, but coming back, I threw them out into the uncut grass. So this is clean without thatch on it, and that's why it looks better. Overall, the cut quality, I think, is probably very comparable. I would agree with that. I was actually looking at that when you were coming back. And uh, if you go too fast with either one of these machines, they'll tend um, not to allow the grass to suck up and cut it off. And it'll kind of, um, I guess, cut it, make it longer, but it'll be leaning over. And that's the uh, trade-off between speed and quality of cut. We can see, but the camera won't pick it up. But right here at the beginning, you can see some of the taller, stemmier parts of this bahia grass you knocked over and you knocked the top off, but there's still a stem there. And that's where he was going fast. But number one, I figured um, that you were gonna say, the machine can go faster than I wanna go on yep. it. And, and you immediately For picked sure. up on that. <laughs> and number two it is the side discharge. And you talked that it left a cleaner path, but it also throws it in the air yeah. and ends up on your face where the tractor we found with the rear discharge, most of that dust is behind you. Right. I would say it, it really, just like everything else, it's going to boil down to what type of property you're mowing. But if I owned this piece of property, I would go to the tractor with the finish mower every time. A lot of people out there want to get that one machine that does it all. I don't think there's any one machine that does it all great. You're right. going to have one machine that does it good in one circumstance and another machine that does it good in another circumstance. But I think there's a slight misconception out there of people that have only owned a zero turn that that is the that it would be the best like i think a lot of people that do a lot of mowing and don't own a tractor would think the zero turn is the right answer maybe get a wider one this is only 40, 54 inch cut maybe get a 72 inch cut and then and then you have one machine but the comfort level between that tractor and this zero turn to cut large acreage the tractor wins the tractor wins on a multitude of two or three times better yeah. i would say coming from running a mid-mount mower on a subcompact tractor on a different type of property, I would still say I probably have the right piece of equipment for what I'm mowing. Given other circumstances, I might choose the finish mower, or if I had a really nice manicured yard like I lived in a golf course, I'd choose the zero turn. Now you got three things to compare, mid-mount mower, um, finish mower behind the tractor, and a zero turn, you think you have the right tool for your particular property. Yes, but my property is different than most right. in that I have pretty tight quarters. I have a lot of hills and moisture to deal with and I mow up close to a lot of things. So 
I feel like I might struggle to maneuver the three-point finish mower in some of the tight spots that I can get the, the mid-mount mower. Some of that's probably experience and just being used to it. But overall, I think for my property, I've, I've made the right choice, but I can definitely see where the finish mower would excel. All right, guys, I don't know if this is gonna be in a line with what your expectations were, but this is real world. This is a guy that hasn't been really on either one of these machines and we let him loose in a pasture and this <laughs> is his on the spot opinions. Hopefully this video helps answer some questions for you. You got any closing remarks there, Lucas? Uh, I don't, but we appreciate y'all watching and y'all have a good day. Y'all take care out there and remember life's short, tractor hard.